from ridiculous malfunctions on set. Should I tell him this or is that going to be weird? To fight tricks the cast weren't ready for. It. I was actually scared. The Suicide Squad proves that violence can be hilarious and the digital effects are to blame. With a lower budget than normal and only four months to make magic happen, director and writer James Gunn really went for it. The production had a bunch of real military vehicles and the biggest set Warner Brothers has ever had. This is a high cost. The new installment was meant to be all about practical effects instead of digital machinations, else the main cast wouldn't have existed. Can we talk about the scene-stealing weasel, though? How can something so atrociously wrong as a child-murdering monster be so lovable? How did they do that? Let's give a round of applause to the special effects team and the man under the graphics, Sean Gunn. Those are his body movements and noises we see in the final cut under all those layers of computer imagery. To make the odd critter come to life, the production team used a motion capture technique. The director's little brother, Sean, had to play Weasel on set while his movements were tracked and converted to software. The footage was then sent to be finished up by the CGI team, who had to draw a full 3D digital mock-up on top of Gunn's silhouette. Boy, was that a hassle. For each of his scenes, Sean was put in a dark, fitted Lycra suit with motion markers all over him. Those colorful knobs were actually strategically placed as close to his joints as possible to get his movements right. The cat-like villain doesn't seem so scary now, does it? You would most definitely not enjoy this superhero look. The issue was how hella tight the costume was. There was barely any room to breathe during the brutal fight sequences. Being a true trooper though, Sean didn't make a peep about it. Something we cannot say about King Shark. Wait, was it not Sylvester Stallone's voice we heard in the movie? And... And you are very right. But the truth is, King Shark was actually played by two actors at the same time. Let me explain. The mastermind writer and director James Gunn wrote the character of a silly, tough, and funny shark with Stallone in mind. But it still took Gunn a long time to figure out the character's appearance. At some point, the superhero movie director stopped mid-production to redesign the whole look for the character. It turns out having a dad bod actually works out pretty well in the industry. Gunn said, We kept designing for a long time, and we finally caught the dad bod that I wanted. And just like that, the original hammerhead shark look was tossed out, which didn't make things easier for filming. The performance required a seven-foot-tall actor to emulate a ridiculous hulking creature. So that's when Gunn brought his friend, comedian Steve Agee, into the game. The team could not do any tracking on Steve because the final character has very little resemblance to a human body. So in real life, Steve had to basically perform as a reference for King Shark's placement in all of the scenes. And to do so, A.G. had to wear a huge wireframe version of a shark head on his shoulders and a heavy chest piece at all times. Giant foam chest piece that was like four times as big as me, <laughs> and then a bicycle helmet with like the framing of a shark's head. How nobody broke character while King Shark looked like this is still a mystery. It was very cumbersome for the star to move around. He couldn't fit through doorways and he kept hitting his castmates. He's like a shark out of water. Can it be worse? Oh yeah, it was way more challenging than you think. As ironic as it is, filming in the water was the biggest challenge King Shark faced. The scenes required Steve to perform in a gray neoprene wetsuit for hours, and this left the actor with rashes all over his body. Yikes. To burst your bubble even more, let's talk about the fight scenes. The Suicide Squad is absolutely packed with explosions and bloodshed. In the single Harley Quinn battle scene alone, 42 fighters were killed within seconds. Even more impressive is that Margot Robbie did almost all of her own stunts. She's just like a super bitch. Margot sprinted across the battlefield with firebombs, mud, and gore all around her and made it seem effortless. But the iconic escape scene left James Gunn absolutely speechless. Initially, the scene was written to be performed either by a professional stunt person or to be tweaked in post-production with effects, but Robbie convinced the crew otherwise. While being hung up by handcuffs with her arms over her head, Margot grabbed the key off the guard's body and flipped her feet backwards, managing to insert the key into the lock and free herself. If you ever need a real life superhero, you know where to find her. She is like a human Swiss army knife who, <laughs> and I'm watching this, it was honestly my favorite day, torturing Margot was my favorite day on set. <laughs> the only thing Margot struggled with was her insanely long javelin, which kept knocking people out. 
that anytime someone said my name, I'd like spin around and, you know, three people get whacked in the shins. And I was like, ah, sorry, I'm figuring it out. Yeah, that part couldn't be edited in post-production. Yet not everyone was lucky enough to do their own stunts. One of the most mind-blowing moments was when the squad attacks the enemy's camp and King Shark lifts a guy to his mouth to eat him. Now to execute it on set, AG just had to run up to the man and stand there while the actual lifting was done by a stuntman and a wire rig. The reason for this is that there was a serious concern that AG would drop the guy on his head and break his neck. To avoid a potential incident, the blood and gore, including the hand motion of the shark, were later added in the final cut of the footage. But not all the villains could be created using actors to capture the movement. The most bizarre creature of all, Starro the Conqueror, was just the pure imagination of James Gunn. The idea of the gigantic starfish capable of controlling minds with its spores came to life with the CGI team's skills. The director wanted a monster that would flop around like a giant puppy who floats around in space and would put people in peril. When I read the script was... <clears throat> I need to read this again. Gunn was obsessed with the bright pink colors, which look completely different to the gritty, grimy streets of Panama, where half of the scenes were shot. So pink, goofy, clumsy starfish it is. One of the main reasons it had to be so striking and vivid was so the villain and the squad would contrast with their environment. Somehow it totally worked, except for one little detail. The cast really had to use their imaginations to visualize what the mastermind villain looked like and where it was located during the scene, as they had nothing to look at. But this was definitely not the case for the rat catcher's lovely pets. Two acting rats were actually brought to the set to add a realistic touch to the scenes. Jaws was used throughout the movie, while Chris Rat played Sebastian and was named after James Gunn's bestie. You guess who that is. And just like that, the special effects team had to animate and add 300,000 more rats to complete the scene with the rat catcher anti-hero. You can see that throughout the movie, the spectacular gore was a mix of on-set work and post-production. Yet one moment nobody could quite picture was King Shark ripping a man in half. It's not surprising that it became Gunn's absolute favorite moment. It's hard to tell how much of the splashes were computer generated and what were the real deal. The truth is, the man's torso was made of prosthetics that was used as a prop, filled with, as AG described, legitimate pig guts. What the f what wouldn't you do to make it look as realistic as possible? The torso itself was divided with a strip that kept the body attached before all the goop came out on the count of three. This was one of many instances where Gunn wanted to use practical effects. For AG, it required no acting, besides standing in the same spot, holding his hands on the body before lifting it up. It may seem like the actor had it easy, but as it turns out, King Shark might be as equally physically challenging as Harley Quinn. In the scene with the huge aquarium, there was nothing but a single actor and a green screen in front of cameras. The small, colorful fish were called Clarax and were all added to the movie by the editing team. That scene was AG's first day of shooting. The actor had the tough task of sprinting back and forth in the aquarium for the entire day with a chest piece that weighed 40 pounds. The whole shot was all CGI and it took a lot of time to figure out how to place each of the water creatures in the scene. It was an exhausting but also rewarding experience for all parties involved. And what do you think about the Suicide Squad? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Click right here to find out more about the movie's characters and their backstories, and as always, stay awesome!